Okay, awesome. I am off screen interviewing, um, but I'm here with Team Nimbus Cove to talk about their project Thunderclap. Um, and so if at any point you'd like to start demoing your project, please feel free. But I'm just going to start off by saying, can you give me um, an introduction to your project or even your team if you'd like? No. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, this is Nimbus Cove. Uh, you want to Yeah, so <laughs> I'm John. Uh, I'm primarily an AI programmer on the team. Uh, I'm Siddharth. Uh, I'm the game designer. Uh, I'm Emma. I'm our producer and art director and concept artist. I'm Mike. I'm our main gameplay programmer. I'm Silver, the level designer. So, uh, Thunderclap is a 3D third person puzzle game where you play as the protege of an inventor. Uh, you're trying to join this guild of lightning mages, but you yourself have no powers. So you're using a set of devices that you and your mentor built to try to manipulate lightning and work your way through a series of tests. Awesome. What was the inspiration for Thunderclap? Were there any other games, movies, a quote, uh, just a kernel of an idea? Uh, yeah, so uh, Cars 2 was a big inspiration for <laughs> us. <laughs> that is, I need to hear more about that. Yeah, because, uh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, that would have been at the bottom of the list if you made me guess. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of obsessed. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just kidding. The real inspiration for the game was just the phenomenon of lightning itself. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea came from the fact that most uh, games which use lightning mechanics kind of just uh, allow you to chain things together without too much effort and you just see the lightning fly past through multiple targets. And the idea was, could we have this game where the primary mechanic revolves around lightning being a bit more difficult to control and learning the nuances of what makes electrical discharge work, uh, which was, it ended up being a pretty ambitious thing because we were stuck between simulation and game. So we are, we're trying to find that balance with this game. It's oh, really cool. Um, what's something that was like super challenging that you were proud that you were uh, overcame? Uh, so I, I feel like we're still overcoming it, but onboarding, was I think our biggest issue. Uh, this game from the start has been like a puzzle in the wrong way where people would just sit down and just have no idea what they were doing. Uh, and we're now at a point with the game where most people are able to get through the entire thing without really getting stuck, which is massive compared to the months and months of just people getting stuck and not knowing what was going on. So I think that's the biggest thing that we managed to over overcome. Awesome. So I see a lot of Greek symbols, or at least I see the Omega. Can someone explain what kind of world-wise, what's that about? Yeah, so <laughs> basically uh, each of these devices that are beneath the character here are switches that control different gates within the world. And so the different symbols on these represent which gates that they control. So you can see that this one next to us has a blue and a yellow one. So the blue and yellow one in front of us here are uh, both affected by it when we hit it. And so these are meant to uh, essentially represent uh, how you're affecting the world when you're using your lightning. Awesome. Uh, as far as the sort of art direction or art design goes, what was ins visually inspiring or what, what was kind of the idea when you started building the world visually? Yeah, we were really inspired by games like Breath of the Wild and God of War and the way that they do their ruin-like environments. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that those are definitely our biggest inspirations. Um, for characters, we were inspired by a couple of games like Persona was a big inspiration for our character art style and it's kind of been a lot of like finding the harmony between those different aesthetics. That's really cool. I definitely see sort of um, shrine-ishness as well, yeah. that, that kind of mechanic of, of puzzle. Um, so yeah, what's, uh, what, what's something that everyone's really proud of that they, they worked on? Something specific. I mean, obviously you should be proud of the whole game, <laughs> but if there's a certain element that uh, the thing I'm most proud of, uh, which we'll see towards the end of this demo here, um, is our current primary interactive puzzle piece in the game. Uh, so it's essentially uh, a, an enemy that you can discharge lightning into, mm -hmm. and then it will automatically find the nearest switch that it can discharge its own lightning into, and it will walk over to it and actually interact with the puzzle itself. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, yeah, so I I was a lot more proud of it earlier, uh, but the way the lightning system works, initially I had like set it up to 
be super flexible so that we could just adjust it however we needed to, which it did end up being possible. And anytime we had a pivot, we were able to quickly just use the components that were built to work with that. Uh, but then there's also the whole thing where it's had like a lot of issues as well as we've had to make larger pivots. But I would still say I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out, yeah. Yeah, and for me, I think my favorite thing has been getting the player character set up and having that interact with that system as a whole. Um, you know, fixing all the issues we have with it and making sure when we make pivots that it's able to uh, go along with those. Yeah, kind of going off that, what I'm proudest of is definitely my design for the player and the gear that she uses. Um, it was a really fun opportunity to design this strong female protagonist. And like, it's my first time that I've ever designed anything mechanical, which is what the endpoints are. Uh, and I'm really happy with how those ended up coming out. For me, my favorite part of all the game is some uh, puzzle design through some uh, <coughs> Through the environment design, I give the players through some level design to did, uh, have some puzzle setting based on the environment. That's the part I'm proud of. That's awesome. What uh, game engine was used to build this? We yeah. used Unity. Very cool. How long is the current um, duration of the playtime that you have it at right now? Um, you can probably Where's play it? through the whole yeah. game in maybe 10 minutes or so for a new player. Yeah, it does vary because uh, it, one of the things that we have right now is we don't restrict people from getting through it without, com without completely understanding it. I see, yeah. So for people who want to kind of dig into it and understand what they're doing, it would take a little longer. Sure. Uh, for people who have no idea what's happening, it takes <laughs> a lot longer. Yeah. Uh, but the reg most of our playtesters get through it in around 10 minutes. Awesome. So um, that sort of gets what... What I'm getting at next is, uh, what is next um, for Thunderclap, if anything, or is this sort of self-contained to a school project? What do we think? Uh, yeah, so we do think that there is uh, potential in the game itself. There's a lot of things we want to do with it uh, that we won't be able to do within the project itself. And we are planning to work on it a bit further to add some more levels, make sure that our onboarding is a bit smoother, get some more puzzles in there that uh, flow smoothly with the rest of the game. Uh, before like putting it on Steam or something. Oh, awesome! So there is Steam in the in the future. Yeah, we have it on itch right now, but we're planning to put it on Steam. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and is there anything exciting about the title beyond what it sounds like, or does someone come up with that? Or I always like asking about the titles, or is it self-evident that it's a clap of thunder? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we've had this has been like a also a point of contention of between course. us and certain other members within uh, our circle, but. Uh, if we found a better title, we would use it. Okay. I think I think it is just the original concept was uh, the way you discharge lightning is through a clap. Uh, so apart from that, it is it is it is what it is. I'd say. <laughs> yeah. Is there um, sort of a larger narrative outside of what's in the game, uh, like uh, why um, why your character is imbued with such power? Or yeah, so uh, the narrative is basically. Uh, your, the character herself is trying to join this guild for her own personal reasons. Her mentor and the adjudicator of the guild have like a feud going from their past okay. because yeah. they were both inventors and then one of them got powers and then the one who didn't get powers was always struggling to catch up with pure invention and his protege who is the protagonist has now come to prove that his devices are able to get through this and that she can do this. Uh, so we do have a bit of that. We don't have the all the voice lines recorded. We do have like one of them recorded for our intro, but we're working on getting all the voice lines in. And there's like a, a there's like funny banter between them. Oh, that's it's awesome. not in the game yet, but that's the plan. That's really cool. Um, that's fantastic. What about um, sound design? I know I can't necessarily hear it there, but is that was that a big component or score or? So it wasn't. Uh, it, it's something that we see a lot of things that we can do with it. But since it wasn't a primary focus for any of us, we kind of have it to like a minimum level right now, where we have environmental sounds, we have some music, and uh, ideally we'd want adaptive music uh, within our puzzles. Uh, one of the ideas we had is that it could uh, a, each time you succeed in a puzzle, the music would have like a swell. Oh, but cool. stuff like that is not something that we could do within this project because each of us has our own specific roles. Totally. Yeah, we do have a lot of emphasis though on making sure that 
the important sounds that we do have within the game really have that large impact that they need to, such as like our thunder. When you clap and discharge a lightning, you have this big lightning bolt that comes down and strikes you and goes through. Mm -hmm. And then you hear the thunderclap that is awesome. very, uh, it's very impactful and powerful and large. So uh, things like that were very important for us to make sure we had them in the game and feeling good. That's really cool. Um, if there's something that, you know, I like to ask of some advice that you could give to someone just starting out in game dev or something that you could have told maybe your younger self, um, what, what, do you have any pieces of advice or something to pass on? Uh, one really big one would be just don't be afraid to try things. Uh, We've tried a lot of things with this project, and a lot of things haven't worked, but they've helped lead us to a lot of the things that have worked. So I would say that's probably a really, really big one. Just don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid of trying new things and letting it pan out. See if it works or doesn't. On top of that, I would say don't be afraid to cut things. Uh, I know sometimes it feels like you're really attached to something, but if it doesn't work out, if people aren't liking it, you got to do what you got to do. Get rid of it. Yeah, I, w I would say uh, if you're thinking about what you're doing with the game, focus on the game before where you want it to be. Uh, in the sense that if you really want to get a game out there, either for your portfolio or you really want to like publish a game, uh, don't think about that last step. Just kind of focus on messing around with it until you know that this is something that you or somebody else would enjoy playing before really pursuing it as a product. And definitely don't be afraid to go outside of your comfort zone and work across disciplines because that's a great way to like get different perspectives and make something really unique and interesting. Awesome. Um, so it sounds like at some point you might try to go to Steam, but for now it's on itch. Yes, yeah. that is correct. Yeah, once as we're wrapping up the semester here, we want to try and get some last finishing touches that we want in the game before we publish it out to Steam. Awesome, but it can be found on Itch, so yes. plug in now. So it's uh, Thunderclap on Itch. .io. Yes, awesome. Thunderclap on Itch.io. Awesome. And anything else you want to add before maybe we wrap up? I'm good. I'm good. I think we're all okay. set. All right. Well, thank you very much, Team Thunderclap. Um, and I'm just going to plug our little awards ceremony. <laughs> so starting at 5, um, we're going to have an award ceremony that's also going to be live streamed. So we're going to pause the stream now, but then it's going to start at 5. Um, so thank you, everyone, for watching. And thank you to Team um, Nimbus Co. for their game, Thunderclap. Awesome. Sweet. Mr. Ben Snyder? <laughs> All set? All set? We still have three minutes. All right, just wait by the stream. Did you plug the I did. Boards? Yep. Yay.